hi fam before i start this video i just want to say happy new month to everyone and happy independence day to all the nigerians watching this video may we all stay blessed amen embryology is just like mathematics each step has its own mark so if you miss a step don't go and draw gross anatomy diagram inside histology you just lose the mark for it is the histology that they want to see so yes i know you have read you have studied and you feel prepared for your exams but <laughs> let me disappoint you a little yes you may have this knowledge on your fingertips but if you do not know how to present it to your examiners if you don't know how to present what you know on your exam script your scores will still be showing you 30 percent and 40 percent and 50 percent so it is when you know how to put down your thoughts your knowledge into writing that is what will now increase your chances of getting the 60s and 70s in your exams hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is jemima and today we are going to be talking about how to answer anatomy questions in exam this is one of my highly requested videos so i decided to bring it up today and it's going to be in a series so this week i'm going to talk about how to answer anatomy questions in exam next week i'm going to talk about how to answer physiology questions in exam and the other week i'm going to talk about how to answer medical biochemistry questions in exam so it's it's like a series that could help you have those distinctions help you have those 60s and 70s that you want to have yes i know you want to have this course and that is why you're here so sit tight and yes i need to remind you that every wednesdays and saturdays there is always a new video on this channel on wednesdays i post about my personal life everything that is outside medical school my hair journey my emotional struggles my skincare routine but saturdays are for medical school videos only so if you're a medical student you have a vip treatment on saturdays so if this is the kind of content that you like please tap on that subscribe button and subscribe to my channel let's get on with the video people keep saying that anatomy department is very stingy with their scores yes i know they are stingy with marks and do you know why it's because there is so much that is expected of you to write in so little time they already know that it's almost impossible not that i'm using the word almost so it's not impossible completely it's almost impossible for, for a student to be able to write everything that's expected of that student within the time frame that they are given i really do not know about your school but in my school you're given voluminous questions to write in less than two hours so if you know so well you will find yourself spending all the time answering the first two questions and the remaining four or five or six questions you would not have the time to attempt any of them so what i advise and what i do is i make sure i attempt every single question giving just the details guys this is the part three of this video i really wanted all this part one two three to be all in one video but it was just too long over 40 minutes video so i had to cut it into three different parts so if you've not seen the part one and two of this video please go and see it it's part one and two is gross anatomy i talked about how to answer questions if you're asked on femoral triangle if you're asked on i mean if you're asked on triangle if you're asked on bone or joint or muzzle or nerve or blood vessel what outline you are expected to have so please i will leave the link up here go and see it all right let's get on with the video and then we move on to histology to me histology is like the easiest it's easier to read easier to pass because they don't expect too much of you the only thing histology is interested in is what you can see under the microscope what kind of cells can you see there like panet cells like adipocytes what cells are you seeing there what fiber are you seeing the the collagen fibers elastic fibers what kind of connective tissue is it loose areolar connective tissue what kind of epithelium is found on that tissue is it simple squamous is it stratified squamous is it simple columnar cuboidal pseudo stratified transitional oh my god there are so many kinds of epithelium then are the structures divided into layer like git that is divided into mucosa submucosa muscularis mucosa serosa adventitia if you're doing explanation of a structure that has layers 
take note of the layers accordingly don't go and start explaining from soft mucosa and then you jump to serosa and then you jump to mucosa arrange it accordingly just like if you're writing about something like the choroid or retina that has layers you start from the pigment epithelium you list all the layers of the retina accordingly and make sure you draw diagrams you cannot write anything histology without drawing a diagram and whatever diagram you're drawing like for example if you ask about the histology of the oviduct or you know oviduct is fallopian tube you go and draw that anatomy diagram of fallopian tube that we both know that comes like that the hands are like this and then the, you in fact you just wasted your time what they want to see is what are you going to see under microscope that is what they want to see don't go and draw gross anatomy diagram inside histology you will just lose the mark for it is a histology that they want to see take note of the glands that are found also in that tissue what kind of glands are found is it tubular glands is it tubular alveolar glands if is, is it alveolar glands make sure you take note of this distinct histology the distinct uh, characteristic of each features like appendices epiploica that you found in the large intestine like the hassles corpuscles you can't write about the histology of small intestine without adding a note on the villus you write about the spleen the splenic cords of bill rot whatever structures you're writing about make sure you add the distinct histology not just distinct anatomy but distinct histology of the structure when you finish writing all of this make sure you make a note on the functions of these cells the function of this structure the function of these fibers that are found on in that tissue like um, goblet cell what is the function of goblet cell you know it produces mucus what is the function of mucus take note of these things and write them down the last but not the least is my favorite of all times embryology Woo! if you ask about the embryology of a structure they are not interested in the gross anatomy they are not interested in the histology what they want to know is step by step how is this structure or how is this organ developed that's what they want to know what is its embryological origin from what part of the trigeminal disc is it formed is it formed from endoderm is it formed from ectoderm is it formed from mesoderm what kind of mesoderm is it intraembryonic mesoderm is it paraxial is it lateral plate is it uh, somatopleuric is it splanchnopleuric mesoderm oh my god you need to know all these things embryology is just like mathematics each step has its own mark that's how embryology is so if you miss a step then you are gone and then diagram is like the one of the not just one of diagram is like the most important thing in embryology each step has its diagram quotes me anywhere so if you're writing your embryology each step you draw it there even though you just circle an arrow if you say the circle increases in size you just show that the circle you draw it one tiny circle you draw a big circle that it to show that it has increased in size you don't need to draw any fine arts picture or fine arts diagram so like i've said i repeat myself again embryology is all about step by step development if you can remember what week does the development start what week does the development end that would help you a whole lot is it from week four or from week five or from week six if you can remember the day in particular or the range it will help you then you cannot write about embryology without writing about the congenital anomaly what happens if a particular process fails to happen or a particular structure fails to develop what happens so with this if you encounter a question and you're asked to write about the anatomy of a structure note you're going to write about the gross anatomy you're going to write about the histology you're going to write about the embryology of that structure but if you're asked and the lecturer narrows it down to write on the histology of this you write only histology write about the embryology of this you write only embryology or write on the gross anatomy of this make sure it's gross anatomy that you are writing for them if you watch this video to this point i'm really grateful thank you so much for watching this video remember every wednesdays and saturdays there is always a new video on this channel wednesdays i post about my personal life my hair journey my skincare routine everything outside medical school my emotional struggles but on saturdays i post only medical school videos so if you're a medical student come back next week saturday i am going to do a continuation of this video i'm going to talk about the physiology 
aspect of this video next week saturday you will want to see the video i remain jemima see you next week saturday bye Mwah. remember remember to like this video if you like it and remember to subscribe to my channel so that you'll be notified when i have a new video see you next week saturday